Hey guys, Cody with Double C Custom Leather here. Um, I know it's been a long time since I've made a video. Um, I've been super busy, started a new job, um, stayed pretty much behind on most of my leather orders. I uh, decided finally to get back in here and try to put another video down. I've actually done a, a version of this video, just never got it edited, um, and I wanted to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and start all the way over. <clears throat> do this video um, from start to finish and uh, go ahead and knock it out. If I if I am a little bit uh, slow on some of my stuff, I haven't done a video in a year, so you guys bear with me until I get back in the groove of things. Um, especially going to take me a while to get, get the editing and stuff back down. I did have it down kind of to a science, and then I quit doing videos because things got busy, life got busy. Um, it's to all the guys who have been watching, um, thank you guys. I, uh, I get a lot of comments still um, asking when. I'm going to do another video uh, asking for specific videos. I'm working on those. Um, this one is something that I've, I've always wanted to do a video on, and I, uh, I just haven't been able to. So um, you guys bear with me. I'm going to try to get through this without too many stumbles. Um, today's video is going to be on the 10 tools that I could not do leather work without. Um, these tools get used every single day in my shop. Um, a lot of them have multi uses. Um, they may be used for more things than what they're intended on. Um, I'll try to highlight some of that stuff um, throughout the video. I got a little list. So if you see me looking off and, and going through my points, I knew I would be stumbling on this video. So I got me a list that if you see my eyes go down, that's what I'm reading off of. So I'm going to flip the camera around. We started, um, like I said, there's 10 tools and I actually included a bonus tool. Um, some of the tools are tool. Um, I guess groups. Um, there might be more than one tool that I use for a specific task, um, but the tools that I'm going to show you are tools that I use every single day from holster build start to finish. Um, and I'd even venture to say that most of these tools um, you could find a household substitute. Uh, and if you have these 10 tools, you should be able to do most things and build a holster out of leather or build a wallet out of leather some kind of leather product you should be able to do it with these 10 tools so um, you guys let me know if you think I missed anything um, put it down in the comments and uh, I'm gonna get the camera flipped around and we'll get started on this all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm just gonna go straight down the list um, start to finish what I have is number one is my cobalt razor knife um, this is one of the disposable blade type knives. Uh, it just comes with these kind of these kind of razor blades. Um, super sharp. I actually buy the cheaper version of the blades because they're a little thinner, and I feel like even though they do dull quicker, um, I can make a lot cleaner cuts with them. Um, so I buy the blades by the hundred pack. Um, really, really good knife. Really well built. I think I've had this one for two years. I think I bought it from Lowe's. Um, Cobalt is the brand. It folds up, so it's not so it's pretty pretty easily deployed um, I've had other ones in the past where the blade retracts and over time that just seems to wear out this is this is kind of built just like a pocket knife um, great little knife that's what I use I know it's not really traditional um, I do have head knives and things like that um, that I use on occasion but nine times out of ten if I need to cut some leather if I need to cut a template out or anything this is what I'm grabbing um, so that's tool number one tool number two is uh, scratch awls I have two main scratch awls that I use. Um, I have some other types of awls. I would say this one here, which is a very small, very sharp um, scratch awl, is probably my number one user. Um, I use this thing all the time. I poke through templates to get stitch lines in some of my holsters. Um, I use it to scratch and scribe lines on, uh, on leather. Um, I use this one a lot to open up uh, leather holes. Um, if I maybe do a hole punch and it's not quite big enough for my Chicago screw to fit in, but I want a really tight fit. I'll do a size smaller and then kind of use this to open it up. It's kind of tapered all the way towards the back. Um, and this one, I think I got from Harbor Freight like a long time ago. I actually used to use this on, on wood projects. Um, and then this one here, I think I, I got from Tandy. It's really small, super easy. Um, it goes into my tool block really nicely. Um, this one stays up on my wall. Um, and I use, I use both quite often. Um, great tools to have around the shop. And uh, oh, by the way, I got a new puppy and he's trying to tear something up right now. Quit it, boy. So if you guys hear me talking to somebody else, it's, it's the puppy. Um, so I'll get these out of the way. That's tool number two is my scratch awls. I literally, I think, use that just as much as I use my razor knife. Um, tool number three is gonna be a good set of rulers. 
Um, I use these metal ones from Hobby Lobby. Um, I also have several. Uh, I have one that's really, really long that I use for cutting straps and things like that. Um, I've got several other metal measuring instruments. Uh, that's old school protractor. I know you guys have probably haven't seen one of those since high school and a square. Um, I use those to draw templates. I use them to cut. Um, the good thing about a metal one is you can cut next to it and not, not worry about cutting into it. Um, so if you want to get a really, really straight cut line, that's the way to do it. Um, so that's tool number three is uh, metal rulers. Tool number four is probably my Berry King Mall. Um, I use this uh, pretty much all the time. I still have one of the poly tandy malls. I know everybody's seen those, the yellow poly malls, um, and those do work great, but this thing's got a lot of heft to it. Um, I, I think it's pretty much indestructible. I've dropped it, I've thrown it. Um, it works really well, it, it, do it does the job. I use a smaller one. I use it for tooling. Um, I use it for setting my maker stamp. I use it for punching, punching holes. Um, driving drift punches, uh, you name it, uh, this, this mall will get it done. Um, it's kind of a one size fits all for me. I don't have several different kinds of kinds and weights of malls to use. Um, tool number five is probably going to be my five sixteenths hole punch. I think I found these. I think my dad actually got them at a garage sale at one point in time. Um, and I'm not even sure if they're meant to be for leather. I have some of the Tandy ones that have the inserts that you screw in. Um, these are just a little bit, little bit more well built. Um, I do keep them pretty sharp. Uh, put them on the, use a Dremel to sharpen them nine times out of 10. Uh, and these things have punched a lot of holes and they're still holding up. Um, I make sure I either use my maul or my poly hammer as to not mess up the ends. If you guys buy a good set of these, you'll have them forever. Um, and you can use them to do belt loops, to do any kind of other holes. This is the one I use for belt loops. Nine times out of 10, it's a 5 sixteenths. I'll do two holes, um, and then I will connect the holes with uh, lines to create a slot or a belt loop. I don't have a belt loop punch. It's kind of on my list of things to get, but for right now, that works, and it does the job extremely well. That is tool number five. Tool number six um, is a set of chisel punches. These are diamond chisel punches, um, two millimeter. Uh, Craft Tool makes them. Uh, you can pick them up at any Tandy. Pretty sure you can also buy them offline. Uh, I have a six. This was a four. This was a two. Um, I used the two uh, more often than not. I used the four on occasion. However, my two snapped the tongue off. I need to replace that. Tandy actually will replace this stuff for free if you do break it. Um, so I do need to replace that, but I, d I needed a two, so I just snapped the two end ones off my four to create a two because it happened right in the middle of the project, of course. And then for my longer runs, I have a six, um, those really straight long lines that you can use a six for. That's my go-to. Um, these make beautiful diamond shape holes, um, make your stitch lines really, really neat, really clean. Um, if you're using tiger thread, which I would highly recommend, um, that's the that's the that's the go-to. The only thing is you can't go through a lot of leather. About three layers of about nine to ten ounce leather, and uh, you'll be barely making it through with your punches. And typically, if that happens, I come back through. I go ahead and get it as far through, and then I use this little awl to punch it the rest of the way. <clears throat> so for your really really thick builds like sheaths and things like that, knife sheaths. Um, these will still work. You're just going to have to have a secondary implement to, to get all the way through. So that is tool number six. Tool number seven, um, and this may seem stupid, but I use this yellow Sharpie all the time in the shop. I don't like the color yellow, so all the other Sharpies that used for actually what a Sharpie is used for, which is drawing, this one gets used for molding. Um, the front tip of these Sharpie uh, pin caps are perfect for molding the inside of trigger guards, molding some of your some of your really really soft curves on a holster. Um, when you're doing any kind of wet molding, that right there is better than any store bought or man-made tool that is specialized for molding. I have other molding tools such as uh, molding spoon. I think Craft Tool makes this one. You can pick that up from Tandy. Uh, I use this buffalo horn creaser um, on occasion, as well as one of these white Tandy creasers. 
Um, I think I use all those tools in conjunction with the wooden handles on some of my other uh, craft tools um, get used quite a bit as well as the inside portions and outside portions of my my slickers um, and honestly though yellow sharpie that's my go-to for molding um, and if you watch my my how to wet mold a holster video I think you'll see me actually using the sharpie and some of these other tools in that video so those are my molding tools that was tool number seven tool number eight is my craft tool stitch groover um, and anybody who does hand stitching ha is pretty familiar with these um, they make a better version however this one the the new blades for it are super cheap I honestly think I've been doing leather work for several years now and I've only replaced this once so um, I just I just keep using it it keeps working and I've never had to sharpen it I just swap the blades out uh, there's a little tiny micro flathead screwdriver on the end that's how you adjust your your depth of your of your stitch line but you're going to use that I have some scrap pieces of leather here um, and I'll show you how this works really quickly and I know I have other videos on this but you basically set it on the inside of your edge and you put your stitch line in um, and that gives you a evenly spaced stitch line that'll help you reset your recess I'm sorry your stitches down below the the flesh line of the leather and that will that will definitely help your stitches from getting abraded and and, and wearing out quicker um, it also gives you a really really clean look um, and it gives you a guideline to go down with your with your punches or if you're sticking your sticking your uh, stitch holes in with a with an awl gives you a gives you a guideline um, you can use a set of wing dividers and I do have a set of wing dividers that I use quite often however anytime I can recess those stitches I try to all right that is tool number eight tool number nine or yeah tool number nine sorry tool number nine is my number four edge beveler um, all my edges get a bevel for the most part other than uh, my um, belt loop edges um, I actually got into an argument on YouTube with a guy about that. Um, he had a good point. I think I had some good points. That's just the way I do it. I don't bevel them. I, I slick them and um, wax them flat. Um, and I may do a video on that pretty soon um, because it was a pretty hot topic. Um, me and a couple other guys were having a discussion about it. Um, and I think that I'm right. They think that they're right. So we'll do a video about it and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But um, back to the tool. This is number four. It's a craft tool. Um, they do make more expensive ones than this. This one works just fine. Um, as long as you keep it sharp and uh, strop it. I usually strop one or two times every time I use it. And uh, it stays pretty, pretty sharp for me. Works well. Um, the reason I say a number four and maybe not like a number three or number two is you can put less pressure and get a number two bevel with a number four, but you can't get a deeper bevel with a number two and get a number four bevel out of it. So this uh, this does happen to be my beveler of choice. If I could only choose one, I'd definitely pick a number four. That is tool number nine. Boom. What are you getting into over there? Put that down. Um, And my tool number 10, this will be the last tool and then I have a bonus tool coming up for you guys. Um, this is my slicker. Um, I use this for slicking edges you can see the the wear and tear on it it has been used and used and used um i had one that actually was a little bit more worn in than this one but i decided to do something stupid and cut it like right here and try to attach something to put a dremel into it um i used it for a little while but i like the way hand slicked edges look way better than machine slicked edges so i'm back to i went and bought another one and i'm back to my original edge slicking recipe with just using a little bit of elbow grease, some gum trag, and uh, beeswax. I have a video on that if you guys want to check it out. Um, I, like I said, I do use this to press down on seam lines that I've glued. Um, it works really well. I use it for molding. Um, it's it's a great tool. And uh, can't say enough about it. I think it's a craft tool. I got it from Tandy. Um, you can pick them up. They're pretty inexpensive. I think they're even under like 10 bucks. And most of these tools, guys, most of these tools are under 10 to $15 range. So you can pretty much pick up these 10 tools for, for less than 100 bucks. other than the mall. Um, 
which was I think like 60 or 70. Um, you can pick these tools up for super cheap and you could have the basis of what you need to make a leather holster, to make a knife sheath, to make some sort of leather products with, with 100 bucks. Um, and you're gonna be paying that for a good leather product anyways. So um, if, it, if you're somebody that's looking into getting into leather craft, definitely shoot a question my way. Um, I may do another another video on tools down the road um, and I may start doing some tool reviews. If I ever pick up any new tools, I'll do a review on them and uh, and, and tell you guys how I like them and, and things like that. <clears throat> um, as far as the bonus tool goes, this is my maker's mark. Um, and if you've seen any of my other videos with my holsters, um, this is this is the my logo basically. Um, I don't even think I designed it. I think I had somebody else design it. Honestly, it was so long ago I can't even remember. It's really crude and really simple, but I, I like things like that. So um, this was made by I want to say his name is Greg, but I'm, don't quote me on that. I'm probably wrong. Um, but it's GregGhostGraphics.com. Um, he makes these. He can make them in any size you want. Um, and these things hold up phenomenally. I've pounded on this thing. I've dropped it. I have. Um, I always keep the cap on it just to keep the 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 actual stamp part clean and and not damaged. However, um, this thing is it's a beast. It's a tank. I, I can't recommend this company enough. I think this thing costs around sixty bucks. So if you are looking to make a maker stamp, definitely give this guy a call. Um, like I said, graygreyghostgraphics.com. That's a tongue twister, sorry. Um, but that's my 10 tools, guys. Um, if you guys think that I've left anything out or uh, you want to add something, definitely drop a comment. And uh, you guys keep watching. i got some more videos coming up. Thanks.